What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another weekend vlog. Today, we're gonna go way back, 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 and we're gonna talk about my old buddy, Milo, and dig into a little bit of the math, and then calibrate an old Scott Spreader. What we do here is go back, 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 back. It's actually not old, it's actually brand new. And uh, I'm just gonna show you how to take a bag of malarganite, look on a bank, get the spreader setting, verify what you're putting down, and then we're gonna actually throw down and have a little bit of fun, maybe talk a little bit about the math and all that all in between there. It's actually not an old Scott spreader, it's a brand new one, just came from the old Home Depot over by there. And all I'm gonna do is uh, just kinda go through making an application of malorganite. And kinda funny, this stuff and the history that we have with it. Comment below if you were around during the battles of 2018 and 19 when this was sold out in every single store across America and people were literally hoarding it. How many of you were around then when it was sold out? Because that's the thing, people, they don't even realize that malorganite is a fertilizer. They just think it's a thing. I'm gonna go and malorganite my lawn. But really this is a fertilizer with analysis 640. 6% nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, doesn't have any potassium. Also got some iron, which you can see right there, two and a half percent. I still use malorganite twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. And for me, it's more of an organic soil enhancement. I do like the fact that it's got some nitrogen in and some iron in it, but for me, it's really about putting organic material into my soil. That's really what I like this for most. And that's what this stands for, malorganite, Milwaukee Organic Nitrogen. You all know, smells like success. Now the reason this smells like success is because it's dead microbes that have consumed waste as a part of wastewater treatment in Milwaukee. And then it goes through these giant ovens where it's turned into these beautiful prills that we put on our lawns. I actually did a tour of the plant a couple, two, three years ago. I'll give you a link up there in the eye and down in the description if you wanna see it. Now we're gonna throw down here in just a second, but first let's understand a little bit more about this analysis. Again, these are three macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. You'll find this on every single bag of fertilizer that you buy. It's called the analysis. And that, and again, it stands for 6%. So 6% of everything in that bag is nitrogen, 4% of everything in that bag is phosphorus. But it's really that nitrogen that I wanna focus on real quick and just illustrate a little something. So let's talk about now what I call pounds on the ground. So when you go to fertilize your lawn, and in this case, we're gonna use malorganite. What you wanna do is get your spreader, and this is a Scott's Turf Builder Edge Guard DLX, and then you just go to the back of your bag, and especially with Scott spreaders, it's always gonna have the setting for you. Because Scott spreaders are just so common, there's always gonna be a setting for you for a Scott spreader. And you can see here, we have a Scott's Edge Guard right there, and that's an 11 and a half setting. Okay, so now what most of you would do is you'd come over here to your spreader. You'll set it to the 11 and a half right there. And you'll just dump that bag in there and you'll just go to town. But how do you know that that setting of 11 and a half is gonna be right for your spreader? I mean, these are expensive. I think they're like 80 or 90 bucks now, but it is just a piece of plastic and it's been sitting in a Home Depot or a Lowe's or an Ace for no, who knows how long and it can get bumped and beat up or if this is an old one that you've had in your garage for a long time, maybe the lawnmowers run into it. I mean, you can see it's just tube metal and plastic. You know, you got a cable here that kind of drives this in a spring. So when all that actuates, you can see it opens up the drop hole there and then the product drops on this called the impeller and then it's flung out. But how do you know that this hasn't been overstretched or bent somewhere along the line or that this, this plastic piece or one of these plastic pieces hasn't been knocked out of alignment? You really don't. You know what I'm saying? So you don't really know, is that 11 and a half setting on my particular piece of equipment, is it right? Is it gonna put the Milo out at the right amount or the right rate? So I'm gonna show you today how to calibrate your spreader for malorganite. All right, now before we go getting too crazy with the throwing down and the spreading and the dreading, we need to go ahead and measure out our lawn. That's the first thing you wanna do is measure your lawn, break it down into logical sections. You can do this using online tools. I have the Yard Mastery app that I'll give you a link to below that you can measure your lawn in there. You can do it by hand. You can walk length times width and do it that way and draw a hand map. Lots of ways to do it. But I want you to, when you do that, is segment out an area that's 1,000 square feet. This part of my lawn right here is 1,000 square feet. 
And that brings us to a standard that I want you to memorize. So in lawn care, when we make applications, no matter if you're applying fertilizer, insecticide, fungicide, doesn't really matter. When you're making applications to the lawn, there's a standard we use, and that standard is increments of 1,000 square feet. That's the standard we use. That's how we talk. And you'll find that on bags of fertilizer. When it tells you how much it covers, it'll tell you that in increments of 1,000 square feet. So remember, pick out an area of your lawn that is 1,000 square feet. Now we come right back down in here, and what do you see on the bag right there? covers up to 2,500 square feet. See, that's within our standard, thousands of square feet. So let's memorize that first thing, that a bag of Milo covers 2,500 square feet. And now that we know that, now we wanna find out how much does this bag weigh? So we can find out what I call our pounds on the ground. And you can see this bag weighs 32 pounds. So I've got 2,500 square feet of coverage and 32 pounds. Let's do a little bit of math, and this is where it gets really fun. 30 two and we're going to divide that by 2.5 because this covers 2.5 or two and a half 1,000 square foot sections. 2,500 square feet is two and a half 1,000 square foot sections. Remember I said our standard is 1,000 square feet. So 32 pound bag divided by 2.5 1,000 square feet sections or 2,500 square feet. What that comes out to is 12.8. So that is called our rate. And that means we are to put down 12.8 pounds per 1,000 square feet. So that is called our bag rate or our application rate. 12.8 pounds of milorganite across every 1,000 square foot section of the lawn. That's what we just figured out there. Now listen, if you don't like this math, it's okay. I still want you to learn it. I've got a detailed blog post I wrote for Milorganite, and we're gonna be posting it coming this week. It'll go into all of this math for you in a lot more detail, and it'll help you for those of you that are visual learners, it'll all be there laid out. So that'll be linked in the uh, description of this video here very soon. So remember that 1,000 square foot area over there? My job is to confirm that I'm gonna get 12.8 pounds of product spread evenly across this 1,000 square foot area using my spreader at the recommended spreader setting. You see, I'm gonna test on a 1,000 square foot area. That way, if the setting is off, I'm not risking an entire bag here. I'm just testing on one small area that I can control. Now, you'll wanna get a hold of one of these. This is like a fish scale or a luggage scale. They're cheap on Amazon. You're gonna use this for a myriad of different things in lawn care. And for your next trip to Cancun, if you get too many souvenirs, you can use it on the way back there too. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I got my 12.8 pounds of product that according to the math, is to go across 1,000 square feet. So I'm gonna put that into my spreader right there and I'm gonna go test it. Set on 11.5 right there and let's give it a shot. Now I already actually tested this the other day so let me show you how my application went. Okay, so this section of my yard that goes from right there to right there is 1,000 square feet. Now this spreader, this has an edge guard and what that means is when you're going down, you probably can't see but that's the property line right there. So when you're going down the property line, you can actually run the wheels of the spreader right against the property line because when you turn this on right here what it does is it shuts off the flow it shuts off the flow to that side so it only is going to spray or throw out right there and you can see as i actuate the handle see that so right now it's blocking that right side and right now the whole thing is open so i'm going to go ahead and turn that on so again this is a thousand square feet my first pass is going to be right down the line and then when I get to the other end, I'll show you what I do. So there we go. I've just gone right down the property line. I don't know if you could tell, but my walk speed is what I call a double fast walk or putting some ass into it. It's just you're walking with a purpose. So now I'm going to turn off my edge guard and I'm going to go down this pass here, knowing that this thing throws out about three feet that way and about three feet that way, I'm gonna throw back to the wheel tracks of my first pass. So as I'm going down through here, I'm watching and I can see the fertilizer going back to my wheel tracks from the previous pass. That's how you do it. It's called your overlap. I'm gonna put you back down here where you were originally so you get the same view. So back over here, you'll see I first went down right down there and I'm gonna come right back through here, throwing back to the wheel tracks of my previous pass.
Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna move over. I don't know if you can see, the wheel tracks are right there. So I'm gonna move over a little bit here. Now I can also see the product is coming down and I can see how much area I have left. Does it seem logical that this much has come down and I have that much left? We're windy out here. But the answer is yes, that seems logical. Let's continue on. Okay, got that much left, and I've just got this area right here to do, and then down through that edge. Seem logical? Sure does. Looks like that setting's doing pretty good. go I'd say that's pretty close just a trickle left and you all know what we do with that little trickle don't you we circle dance that out of there So you can see that setting worked out just great for me which means that my Scott spreader was properly calibrated right from when I bought it nothing was wrong with it now I'm confident with that now I don't need to do 1,000 square foot areas. I can do more. I can put you know, 3,000 square feet worth of product in there and go and do 3,000 square feet knowing that my spreader setting is right, but also more importantly, or just as important, is I need to have that walk speed. Remember I said it's that double fast walk. You're kind of putting some ass into it. And then third is your overlap, throwing back to the wheel tracks of the previous pass each time you go back and forth. Now, if this seems daunting to you, I promise you, once you make one or two applications, you'll be a professional. And that's because you really only have one lawn to learn, you know? Like my lawn here is 7,000 square feet and it's divided into like four sections. It's not really that difficult. I fertilize those sections the same every single time. I've only had to learn that pattern one time for one lawn. So you become an expert with your equipment on your lawn very quickly because that's all you're dealing with. And Melorganite makes an excellent product to test with because you're not gonna burn anything with this. If you did happen to do an over application for some reason, if you were to dump that whole bag in there and go push and it ends up coming up short and you over applied, I don't want you to do that. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you to calibrate like I just taught you, but if you did, it's not gonna hurt anything. So this is a no fear type application and a great one to learn on. Again, don't forget, I'll have that blog post on the Melorganite blog linked below sometime in the coming week. And then also I wanted to just, while we're here, I wanted to just show you some compare and some contrast between this an organic product, a natural product versus a synthetic product and pounds on the ground. So I love doing this because it really brings home an interesting point for you guys when it talks about pounds on the ground. Both of these have a very similar amount of nitrogen. In other words, all of that melorganite right there contains 0.76 pounds of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet. So basically three quarter pound. The way we know that, because remember over here, application rate is 12.8 pounds per 1,000 square feet. That means this is 12.8 pounds. This gets across 1,000 square feet. Remember this number, six here? So 6% of everything in here is nitrogen. So if you take the 12.8 pounds times 6%, you get 0.76. That means there's 0.76 pounds of nitrogen here, which is three quarter pound. And this is for 1,000 square feet, remember? So that's three quarter pound of nitrogen across 1,000 square feet when you use the bag rate of melorganite. Now let's go over here to flagship. You guys know this, this is synthetic. It also has bionite in it, which is very similar to melorganite, just comes from Florida. 
But what I wanted to show you is this right here, this gives you 0.72 pounds of nitrogen. So almost the same. We'll just call them the same, three quarter pounds of nitrogen, but look at how much less you need, much fewer pounds on the ground. That's because we have some synthetically de derived nitrogen here. And because of that, we're able to pack 24% of the bag with nitrogen. So the, so the application rate here is three pounds per 1,000 square feet. See, because it says right there, 18 pound bag covers 6,000 square feet. 18 divided by six is three. The application rate of this product is three pounds for every 1,000 square feet. I've got three pounds right there. And because we know it's 24% nitrogen, I can take three times 24% and I get 0.72, or what we're calling three quarter pounds of nitrogen. So in other words, these two products are equal in their nitrogen. It just takes a lot less, a lot fewer pounds on the ground here and a lot more pounds on the ground here. And you can't really change this. This is an organic product, a natural product. You can't really juice that up. This you can juice up or down however you want. But just wanted to show that's the difference in an organic and a synthetic. And neither one is bad because you guys, you can go to the produce section and eat a whole lot of organic broccoli to get all of your nutrients. Or you can go over here and you can take a daily vitamin and get all your nutrients. That's the synthetic side. But what do most of you do? You do a little of both, just like I'm doing here today. So I hope that was helpful to you. Now, one other thing that I'm noticing here in Florida is we're very dry right now. We see these clouds out here, but it's not bringing a lot of rain. And just a couple days ago, I noticed some dry spots over there on that side of the lawn. So I wanted to show you a couple, two, three things on that. So, so a lot of y'all that live here in Florida, you're from up north and your wet season, your rainy season is spring and then somewhat in fall and your summers are dry, but it's the exact opposite in Florida. Right now, the spring, especially the very early spring, this is our dry season and the summer's our rainy season. In the summer, it rains here every afternoon for like 30 minutes um, and it's a spotty rain, but right now it's dry. Now we are a little spoiled because all through the winter we had an El Nino winter. So we had an actual opposite winter. We had a very wet winter. And so we've been spoiled. In fact, it was such a wet winter, it took us out of our drought. Now I'm talking more about the west coast of Florida, but it applies to most of Florida in general. And so what happened was we've been spoiled with the rain and now we're dry again. So all I'm saying here to do this is you need to start looking for your dry spots, adjusting your irrigation. You all know I take a hundred words to say what should take two or three, but yeah, dry spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of hand watering here and then probably a dry spot right there. Just so you know, the way you can tell is when you get down in here, see how the St. Augustine grass blades are curled over? That's what I'm calling a dry spot. And these are areas that'll start to recede and wanna go dormant. So that's how you know. And then you come over here to this area that is getting enough water and you'll see they're folding up. So they're, they're trying to tell me they're in pain but they're, they're definitely not folded up totally. They're a little bit wider. So this area, you know, something to think about. Whereas, whereas you come out here into the main lawn and you'll see, let's see. Yeah, see, these are not really folded up at all. They're standing proud and tall. So we got enough water. Well, a little folding, a little bit of folding there. You know, that's what we're kind of looking for. A little bit of folding is fine. I mean, this is, this is great out here, but over there are my dry spots. So what that's telling me is, is I just got to check out that zone and see what's going on. So that'll be my weekend project to uh, test that and uh, see what I can do to improve those areas. But for now, we'll have a little fun hand watering. So yeah, so the uh, advice there is, is to go ahead and dial in your irrigation. Go ahead and run your zones, make sure everything is covering properly and areas that are drying out, you may need to release a head or do something like that, do a little bit of work, but get on that irrigation early so you don't get behind for the season. All right, last thing I'm gonna do is go over and do a little mowing with that. Yes, you guys probably never thought that Alan would come over to the dark side, but they got one with an Ego battery and I just, we got Bermuda now at the Freedom Factory and some Zoysia that I wanna keep low, so. That Bermuda especially though, it's gonna require this bad dog. All right, y'all, so here we are out at the Freedom Factory. I don't wanna give you too much of a preview. The uh, main video that I've been shooting all week is gonna come out on Monday, so you can check that out. But I am getting ready to give it a real mow. I'll tell you that I got the Sterling 51 there, runs on the Ego batteries. And I can tell you, I've already done the Bermuda over there. The stripes are, mwah. and it's not even really, I mean, we still have a lot of lines that need to close up. We got a lot of seams to close up still, but. It's looking about as good as, I think we'll get you know another couple layers of, of green. I think some of it will clean up a little bit. I'm gonna burn the stripe, put the stripes in the first time yesterday. I'm gonna burn them in 
a little bit more today. But yeah, look for some content on that. A lot of guys are saying you came over to the dark side, and I did. I had always sworn I wouldn't real mow, but when you have Bermuda grass, it's pretty much required when you want to keep it sub one inch. Right now we're mowing it at one inch, and I'm going to keep it there, try to come down a little more, and then we'll be bringing out a robot as well. Got that ready to go. So a lot more content coming up out here, and you'll get to see me work on all these grasses, including the zoysia that's right over there. It's coming along. So I'll end up with a little bit of footage here. And again, I don't want to give away too many spoilers or whatever, but I'll give you a little bit of footage here at the end of this video of me mowing with the Sterling 51. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Happy Easter to you, because that's when you'll be watching this. Lord is risen, and I'll see you in the long. great to finally be one of the cool kids.